Place your bets, you jack wagons. Brad, the big noise. If it's here on a solo express edition of the Feed 5 podcast, I'm going to get something out because it's March Eve Eve. The greatest time on the sports betting calendar is nearly here. So without further ado, on this Manic Monday, let's get after it with another edition of the Feed 5. Numero Cinco on the list. Uh, I'm going to go with Eastern Washington, minus two and a half, and a monstrous game of sorts in the Big Sky Conference. Yes, seeding's already been determined in that conference tournament, uh, getting underway later this week. But I think Eastern Washington uh, has really a a chance to assert themselves as the kings of this league against Montana State. Uh, Both teams top 130 right now. According to Bart Torvik's Advance Analytics, but give me E Dub minus a two and a half and minus one ten at Bet MGM. This team is undefeated, uh, an impeccable ten and zero at home this year, and they are number one not just in conference but in all of college basketball and home games and effective field goal percentage offense. Uh, they are splashing at sixty three point one percent inside the arc. That's crazy. Thirty eight point nine percent outside of it, and also hitting their freebies at a seventy seven point nine percent clip. Again, in their home action, uh, they're number one twenty two in effective field goal percentage defense in those home games. Nothing really to write home about there, but not god awful by any stretch of the imagination. They've won eighteen of their last nineteen, and they won earlier this season at Montana State seventy to 67 so yar captain hook related and coming to play in that game montana state very good on the road nine and five straight up this year but number 158 an effective field goal percentage offense number 94 an effective field goal percentage defense but where they are most vulnerable is the fact they don't uh, match three for three number 297 and three point percentage offense so a very good free throw uh, free throw shooting team in their own right so Eastern Washington. Thank God your court's not painted red like your football field. Gets it done. Lay the chalk. Minus two and a half. All right. The Baylor Bears. Are they going to be cocaine bears? Uh, Hopefully so tonight. Even though they're going to be down at Keontae George, the outstanding freshman guard, going to be sidelined. Uh, Listed as day-to-day with uh, what is being called by Jeff Goodman. A mild ankle sprain, but I still think there is enough firepower on this team to get the dib on the road at Oklahoma State. And most importantly, it doesn't matter what the outcome is. I think they're scored at least 71 points tonight. Give me the over on that. Minus 115 at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, You look at Baylor. uh, Since uh, February 14th, Oklahoma State, guys, uh, is number 350. I'm not making this up. An effective field goal percentage defense. And, you know, if you look at the entirety of their portfolio, one of their calling cards is, in fact, defense, where you look at an EFG numbers or adjust the defensive efficiency. But they have been putrid, pew, here of late, guarding and botting up the opposition. They're also number 147 during that stretch. Uh, an effective field goal percentage offense, and they're barely even top 50 overall at Bartorvik in the uh, in, in entire efficiency. That's why they've lost four straight games, again, since Valentine's Day. Uh, you look at Baylor, uh, number four on the road this season, just at offensive efficiency. Uh, they're shooting nearly 36% from three, where they are taking a ton of shots, 43.5% of their Jackson fact come from distance, uh, and they're a team, too, that's uh, generally performed fairly well on the road. So you throw in the fact that uh, Oklahoma State, not a particularly good offensive rebounding team, and the fact, too, that Jonathan Chamu Chachawa is in uniform for this matchup, was not in uniform for the first game uh, in which Baylor emerged and covered on this number. So uh, despite a 4-5 and five record, I know they've been uh, painfully mediocre on the road, I think the Baylor Bears, yeah, those cocaine bears, drop some lines and get it done. They're going to score over 70 and a half points. Numero Trace here on the Feed 5 Express Edition podcast. Give me Florida State. And no, I'm not drunk. Uh, plus eight at home against North Carolina. And you might say, okay, there's some bias baked in. 
uh, to this uh, this general view because Florida State won on an improbable game clinching three against Miami over the weekend after being down 25 points. The game was decided, and they scratched and clawed their way back into that and somehow got the victory and prevented Miami to get at least uh, an outright share or share of the ACC regular season title. North Carolina firmly on the bubble. They cannot lose this game. Period in the story. Must win situation for them if they have any shot of bouncing off the bubble into the field. They do have the one quadrant one thanks to that victory over Virginia, uh, but they can't find the pothole in the row by any stretch of imagination. But I think FSU at home keeps this one fairly snug. Uh, that's why I'm going to take 10 plus the eight here. North Carolina away from Chapel Hill this season a miserable three and seven straight up where they're number 343 in those road matchups and all of college basketball would affect a few goal percentage offense uh, a little bit better uh, defensively number 65 in EFGD in those road games but again going back to the uh, offense they're shooting just 46 and a half percent of the road and most importantly only 26 and a half percent from three and that 46 and a half percent from two uh, they are just uh, building skyscrapers, all the bricks that they have laid. Uh, Florida State, 5-10 and 10 straight up at home this season. Yes, they're 250-plus in EFG offense and defense and 200-plus in offensive rebounding and defensive rebounding. But if you look at their performance here of late, six of their last eight games, they have lost by nine points or fewer. So nine and always greater than the eight here. Uh, but they've been competitive, and I think they're going to be exactly that tonight at home. Uh, it's been a season they could write off, but maybe they play a little bit of a spoiler tonight and ruin Carolina's chances of dancing. So give me Florida State. I'm not saying they win, but they get the cover plus eight against Carolina. Numero dos on the feed five today. Uh, let's go to the Atlantic Sun Conference Tournament. Uh, the first conference tournament getting underway. An opening round matchup there. Give me the over. Florida Gulf Coast, not quite Dunk City of yesteryear under Andy Enfield against Queens, which is not uh, in New York. It's actually a school in North Carolina. Give me the over on 153 and a half minus 110 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, both these teams uh, really get up and down the floor, and they do a, a tremendous job overall in that regard. Uh, the first matchup was in the 80s between these two pair of squads, smashing the over on this 153 and a half. You look at Gulf Coast, number 153, an effective field goal percentage offense, and number 113, an effective field goal percentage defense, and road neutral games, and some being played on a neutral floor, I believe in Georgia. But 44.5% of their shots are coming from beyond the arc, and they're number 240 on the year and adjusted offensive efficiency. Meanwhile, you look at Queens. Uh, one of the faster teams in the country, number 99 overall in adjusted tempo, according to KenPom.com. And according to Torvik and road neutral matchups this season, number 92, respectable showing there, an effective field goal percentage offense, and number 214, so forgiving an effective field goal percentage defense. Uh, they're shooting 35.3% from distance, where 44.6% of their shots are unleashed. So both these teams shooting right around 44% of their uh, balls leaving the hand from long distance. Hopefully those will be light up the scoreboard here. And as a result, they're going to pile up the points. Again, game one and the regular season between these two teams, 84 to 82 was the final. Uh, I think this one's at least in the high 70s in a neutral court environment. Give me the over. Gulf Coast and Queens, 153 and a half minus 110 at FanDuel. All right, numero uno on the feed five express edition podcast today. Give me an OGP and come with me, will you? On Nevada, the Wolfpack. Oh, money line and the under 145.5. Uh, this game being played in Laramie against the Wyoming Cowboys. And uh, the juice on this uh, this particular prop or parlay, I should say, plus 100, even money at DraftKings Sportsbook. And I think water pistols are going to be packed uh, for a while in this game, uh, much like it has the entire season. Nevada, 
uh, a game, a team you should ride off on the road. They're six and six straight up this season. And uh, more importantly, they are a slam of the door by hitting their free throws here down the stretch. As a team, they're shooting 76.6% at the charity stripe. Uh, yes, they're number 250 in effect, a few goal percentage offense and away games this year, but number nine in all of college basketball and adjusted defensive efficiency, give it up just 48.4% from two point land, 33.0% from three. And they like to slow it down, uh, put the Jodeci on loop, plus 253 and adjusted tempo in those road matchups this season. Look at Wyo at home. Not exactly uh, defending uh, the home court there. Five and eight straight up, where they're number 227 in effective field goal percentage offense and number 294 in effective field goal percentage defense. Quite generous there. Uh, going back to the offensive side, they're only shooting 32.1% from distance within their own friendly confines. And then defensively, give it up 50.9%. Inside, that's great news. The seven footer Will Baker of Nevada and 35.9% from distance. And another team that isn't blitzing you in terms of their overall speed number 157 and adjusted tempo in those home matchups. So, in a game, I think it's going to be in the mid to high 60s. We're going to build up that cushion. These are alt lines here. Nevada on the money line, I meaning it's got to win straight up. And then the total on boosting up to 145. And taking that under at 145 and a half. Even Stephen Cash at DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, it's bonus time here on the Feed 5 pod. And what better way to tip things off than with a team huevos. And it's not quite huevos. He got taste very average huevos. Uh, not quite team reasons. Uh, not trivially and shrinking in nature by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but we got a plus 230 juice on that. And yeah, let's get seduced by that juice at DraftKings Sportsbook. A three-leg money line parlay. Give me the Iowa State Cyclones at home against West Virginia. Uh, give me Nevada for all the reasons I already mentioned. And then give me Eastern Washington for all the reasons I mentioned on them. Plus 230, as I said, at DraftKings. Give me some background on Iowa State. They're taking on West Virginia. Inside at the Hilton uh, in Ames, Iowa, and it's senior night. Uh, this is their last home game of the season. They have eight seniors on roster. Uh, four of them, I believe, start on this team. Uh, might be five, as a matter of fact. So, uh, uh, you know, emotions are going to be high. They're going to go out with a bang here, and I think they're going to take care of business. Iowa State, a very strange team in terms of the resume. Uh, they have double-figure losses, but right now my last number four seed on the bracket big board uh, so another marquee win here would definitely solidify their standing for now as that number four seed of loss would probably drop them down at least a line. Uh, but you look at Iowa State, a team that is 13-2 and two at home where they were number three in adjusted defensive efficiency in all of college basketball in those home matchups. Uh, middle of the road offensively, number 163 in EFG offense. Meanwhile, I look at West Virginia. They've only won two games on the road. And I know what you're thinking. Recency buys is a hell of a drug, Evans. I just watched them play Kansas until the final moments, and it was a tight affair. I get that. Uh, a team that can certainly play that way, no uh, doubt about it, no stretch of the imagination there. But as I mentioned, 2-8 and eight straight up uh, away from home where they were number 28 in adjusted offense efficiency. Great numbers there. And number six in defensive rebounding percentage. But where they have struggled is in EFG defense, number 273. Yes, they get to the free throw line. Yes, this game is probably going to take seven hours and 33 minutes uh, to complete uh, due to the you know excessive whistles that are surely going to be uh, blown in this particular matchup. But I think uh, Iowa State doing it for the seniors. Those guys are going to step up uh, in front of a rowdy and raucous crowd there at home and get the dub. So Iowa State, Nevada, Eastern Washington all win. It's plus 230 at DraftKings Sportsbook. And uh, last one I'll give you real quick here in bonus time. I like Queens to win straight up in that matchup against Florida Gulf Coast in the Atlantic Sun Conference Tournament. And I'm going to slap that together with North Florida to also get the win in their matchup. Uh, both of those events occur. They're both favorites. It's plus 154 right now at 
DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm out of time. I watch live on the line across the Valley Sports RSNs and at watchstadium.com slash live. Watchstadium.com slash live starting at noon Eastern. Uh, there's replays all day as well for that particular show. I'll be back tomorrow with a full episode and Lundy by my side on the uh, new edition of the Fade 5 podcast. We'll have another loaded slate in college basketball. I am on the road on Wednesday. Going to try to sneak in a uh, pod at some point in the day, but I'm flying to Denver, hanging out with Lundy, as a matter of fact, and seeing the boss, Bruce Springsteen, at the Ball Arena. There's going to be adult beverages flowing there. Uh, tentatively hope to get a podcast up on uh, Thursday morning as well. But uh, TBD, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That's why we're sneaking in this one today. As always, until next time, fade or follow, that is up to you.